Hello everyone, I'm George from Ireland. So behind me you can see the house where Saki lived um, the last few years of his life. Though he didn't die here, he died at Beaumont Hamel in France. So Saki's real name was H.H. H. Monroe. The H is for uh, Hector Monroe. Um, and as a true Briton, he was born in Myanmar. Then it was Burma, a British colony. Um, so his father was an inspector in the Indian police. Um, Burma was considered a part of India at the time, wasn't officially separated until 1935. So uh, his mother was a mercer, and through his mother he was the first cousin of the celebrated writer Dornford Yates. Um, as in Dornford Yates wrote under the name, the maiden names of his two grandmothers, though his actual surname was Mercer. But back to H.H. H. Monroe. So um, H.H. H. Monroe was um, sent back to the British Isles. He was schooled here. Uh, brought up by, by, by um, maiden aunts in Devon for a while, very formidable figures who then um, featured prominently as fiction, thinly disguised, in his fiction thinly disguised. He uh, was um, schooled at Bedford School. The only other famous old boy of that school is um, the late Paddy Ashdown, one time leader of the Liberal Democrats. But don't let that put you off. I visited it, it's not a bad place. Anyhow, back to H.H. Uh, H. Monroe. So, um, after school, I'm not sure what he did for the first few years, but eventually he went out to be a civil servant uh, in the Jewel of the Crown. So he served in uh, Burma or Myanmar as it is now for a few years. However, he was quickly stricken by various tropical maladies uh, and his, his um, health condition so debilitated that um, he was advised to uh, quit the service and return to Blighty, which he did after only one year and two months. So he sailed back via Suez. Um, he pr pretty soon set himself up as, as a writer, so as a man of letters, and after not so long he had got this place here at Mortimer Street, uh, and there was the um, Coco Tree Club not far away, we played bridge on a daily basis. He was also um, cruising for some rough trade, he was a Ganymede at a time when such behaviour was unlawful. Anyway, um, and he wrote for a number of newspapers, later was a correspondent posted to, to um, uh, Warsaw, was then part of the Russian Empire, also um, uh, St. Petersburg, the capital of, of Russia at the time, Moscow. He was in Russia for the 1905 revolution, various other cities, he spent a lot of time in Paris, the Napoleon land which suited him uh, well, since his sexuality was not criminalized under the Napoleonic Code. Um, anyway, he became very well known in the Edwardian period, and uh, he wrote many superlative short stories I was scarcely aware of him till 2017 when I became um, an aficionado of his fiction. So they are enchanting, absolutely uh, riveting from the first word to the last. They've got pace, they're richly evocative and descriptive, they've got very vivid ca characterization, they're droll, they've got such witty and lively uh, conversation without being stilted. It's still, it's still realistic dialogue, so he's got an ear for, for genuine conversation. So I warmly recommend his, his, his prose to you. So far as I know, he never turned his hand to poesy. He did write one play, which is quite epic in length. Um, and then um, when the First World War came, he valiantly volunteered for military service, despite being 43, too old to do so. Nevertheless, they accepted him. But despite his education, um, uh, he, was, he served as a ranker in a cavalry regiment, the second, second, second King Edward's Horse. It was transferred to another cavalry regiment, though um, horses weren't used to charge the foe, not on the western front, after the first few weeks because barbed wire and machine guns made um, uh, cavalry obsolescent for that. It was hoping when the infantry broke through, then the cavalry could move forward to, to exploit the breakthrough. Yeah, that never really happened um, in Western Europe. Uh, anyhow, so he fell ill sometimes, he was wounded, he was invalided back to the United Kingdom, but against all medical advice, he insisted on hastening to the battlefront before he was properly recovered. So nobody could uh, say that he stinted for uh, courage. Um, anyway, uh, he also advocated for the, for the um, cause, for the Allies. We vindicated for it even before the war when William came. As part of this spate of um, perhaps alarmist novels, maybe Germanophobic, saying the Teutons were going to invade. Here's the invasion of 1910. Uh, there was the, the Riddle of the Sands by, by um, how can I forget his name? Erskine Childers, son of the Irish president. 
the Irish president used to live at my parents' house. Not before my parents were there, but before they bought it. Visited my parents' house, I should say. And, and there, there were various other ones. Uh, Rudyard Kipling uh, was a friend of his, um, uh, uh, saying yes, ringing the alarm bell that um, Jerry might invade any day, things like that. And then he was also um, speaking up raw writing for the Allied cause during the war and I, um, that, uh, about Britain under Hohenzollerns, what would happen if the Kaiser was uh, ruling at Buckingham Palace. So um, perhaps it was um, too photonophobic, xenophobic twaddle. But anyway, I don't think you can doubt its sincerity. So there's some night attack when someone started smoking and that attracted um, the German attention. Um, famous last words, put that bloody cigarette out before a sniper got him through the head and that was the end of him. So he lies in a simple soldier's grave on the Western Front. I think it's a pity he didn't come back home to be laid to rest in British soil, perhaps even in Burmese soil, as is born in Myanmar. But uh, the, the government was quite clear on this from very early in the war. Some affluent families had planned to build these magnificent mausoleums where their sons could rest for all eternity in glory. But the government said, no, no, we'll have military cemeteries. You're absolutely not allowed to repatriate the remains of your dear departed. They shall lie where they fell in France or Belgium, whichever theatre of conflict it was. And there was a uniformity and there was an equality in death, no matter what the person's rank in, in military or civilian life. And so he is there. They all have those, those same graves. Now, you can build a memorial at home if you wish. But that is him. So um, he's an absolutely fantastic writer. He uh, was an avid uh, re reader of Wilde, Conan Doyle and other words, others. He was a seminal influence on, on another generation of writers that followed him. But that's H.H. H. Monroe. But he always wrote under his nom de plume Saki, which is taken from the Ruayat of Omar Khayyam, that famous uh, Persian epic poem, which was uh, fantastically translated by Edward Fitzgerald in the mid-19th century. Um, somewhere, somewhere on the eastern coast of England, he translated it. If you read uh, Brendan Behan's Borstal Boy, he um, notes that uh, it was not far up the coast from where he was held, but uh, that was translated. Um, okay, uh, near Holsley Bay. I don't think there's anything else I've got to add about uh, Saki. So, uh, yeah, dip into his stuff, you shall find it most agreeable. Um, I can't remember what the other H in his, his, his um, name uh, stood for, but uh, he produced um, dozens of books. He also wrote. Um, um, an epic scale history of, uh, of Russia and it was loosely based upon um, Edwin, uh, Edward Fitzgerald, Fitzgibbons, forgive me, Decline and Fall of the Roman Empire, which is all the rage, obviously having been written over a century before he was born. So he's born um, 1870, he died in 1916 and his cousin um, Dornford Yates was about 10 years younger than him, lived on till 1960 or so, died in Zimbabwe. I know a lot about Dornford Yates. He went to my college as the Dornford Yates Dining Society, which anybody's invited to be from different subjects. But if you refuse an invitation, you'll never be invited again. All right, that's enough from me. So please donate liberally to me on PayPal, georgecallahan79 at gmail.com. That's all small letters. Um, Callahan spelled C A L L A G H A N. Right, toodaloo.